Bismillah, alhamdulillah, peace be with you. Welcome to another episode of The Dean Show. And my next guest coming out at the young age of 20, accepted this dean, this beautiful way of life. It's practiced by over 1.5 billion people all across the globe. And he started to ponder and think and started asking those serious questions. Purpose of life. Have you ever wondered? Have you asked those questions? Where did I come from? Where am I going when I die? We're replete with everything else. Money, cars, jewelry, bling bling. But at the age of 20, this young man started to think about purpose. And now he accepted the dean and he's on the dean's show. All the way from Serbia, he was born in Serbia, raised in Hungary, actually in Toronto. And you know what? We're just going to wait, bring him out, and he's going to tell us the rest because we've got an exciting show with our next guest, Esau Greg, here on The Dean Show. This is The Dean, The Dean Show. This is The Dean Show. This is The Dean, this is The Dean Show. Back here on the Dean Show with Isa. How are you, my brother? I'm good. Alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Praise to the Creator of Heavens and the Earth. Before I was starting, I was starting off and I was going to like, you know, go into your whole uh, biography, but I said, let me just not mess it up. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, bring you on okay. and you can kind of go ahead and talk to us a little bit about yourself. I mentioned in an opening that you were born in Serbia. Is yeah. that right? That's in Europe, former Yugoslavia. Yeah. Hungarian background. Yeah. Live, have lived almost your whole life in Canada. Yeah, exactly. Okay, tell us, talk to us about this. Okay, so um, I was born in uh, Serbia, and I was a year old when my parents moved here to Canada. And um, so I've lived pretty much my entire life in uh, Toronto, Canada. I visited back home uh, quite a few times, and on my recent trip back home, I got a chance to uh, travel a little bit th more throughout the region, uh, you know, to such places as Bosnia, which was really nice. And You've also, been to Bosnia, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah I've been to Bosnia. And that was my last trip in uh, Europe that I went on with my family. And it was just after I had uh, accepted Islam. Now, so your parents, they come from a Catholic background, Christian yep. background? Yep. So I was uh, baptized, uh, confirmed, and also, also had my uh, first communion as well as a, as a Catholic. Yeah. Now, you know, the whole purpose of the show mm -hmm. is really promoting purpose of life, for people to really think and ponder, Absolutely. to ask those serious questions. Yeah. You know, where'd I come from? Mm -hmm. You just popped up in this world, right? Mm -hmm. There's a moment in time we didn't exist, then mm -hmm. we were in the womb, and now mm -hmm. we're in this world, and now, and pretty soon we'll be in the tomb. Mm -hmm. So really to get people to reflect about the importance of, you know, knowing your purpose in life, living your purpose in life, and you started to ask these, these important questions. You started to ponder and think at a young age. At, at around 19, 20? Yeah, 20 years what old. What stimulated that? 20 years old. Well, I must say it was, it was through uh, meeting a very nice brother. And uh, it was through him that uh, I actually got introduced to Islam. And from that point on, <clears throat> I definitely started to research and study, <clears throat> read the translation of the Quran, and also go to uh, different masjids in Toronto. I went to, I had the honor of going to the uh, first Journey of Faith conference where I was delighted to, to run into you. And uh, I had been watching some of your shows. This was right at the beginning of when I uh, actually was looking into Islam. And I had actually accepted Islam without, um, without fully researching it because I just simply knew through the person who um, told me about Islam that Islam, is, Islam was, the, was, the, was the truth. I was, I was, I was totally, um, I would say, convinced. Mm -hmm. So wait, explain that again. Someone says, okay, so you accepted it because someone had provided you with the evidences, the proofs, you were convinced from everything they told you. What they tell you? Well, see, it was more, I would say, more through his, his actions that I was convinced. I saw that he had very strong faith. I thought, you know, I just saw, saw in him a lot of sincerity, a lot of genuine care for other people. And he's somebody that, you know, has helped a lot of people and um, I was, I was uh, 
definitely fortunate enough to, to have met him when, when I, at a point in my life I was ready to change. Now someone says, look, Mother Teresa helped a lot of people. She fed a lot of poor, you know what I mean? So it could have been just the other way around. You could have met some, some other person who was a Hindu who was helping a lot of, good pe helping a lot of people, good character. You know, what if somebody mm -hmm. came at you and said, you know, look, you want me to really think about purpose of life and, you know, what's so special about this dean this way, mm -hmm. you know, besides that? What else was mm -hmm. it that... I mean, I definitely had my... Uh, I, I had doubts at the beginning, I would definitely say. I had my uh, doubts, you know, those, those questions coming to that. Is Islam the truth? Is this really the way? You know, so I could definitely say the best... Um, they say the best cure for ignorance is, is knowledge. So... I would definitely say that's exactly what I did. I was doing my research. I was talking to people. I was talking to imams in Toronto. I was, I was meeting brothers, you know, converts to Islam, hearing their stories. That's actually what really helped me a lot at the beginning was listening to other people's stories, how and why they, they came to Islam. And that uh, really just, uh, you know, solidified, solidified it for me. You know, all the research I did, all the people I talked to, and, uh, you know, a after I did that research, that's when I was, I was fully convinced. And about um, five or six months after is when I fully started practicing. It was my first Ramadan. I started praying. I had the chance to go to a Middle Eastern country, Dubai, for three weeks with some very nice brothers. And that experience, I definitely would say, changed my life completely. Now, there's somebody out there, I'm sure they just can't get past the beard. <laughs> so <laughs> someone's thinking, like, look, this guy, like, you know... He's, what, what is, uh, wh why is he growing a beard now? What's with the beard? Tell us. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, uh, quite honestly, I, Have I you had a problem with your family or somebody, uh, you know, that just uh, was, it gives you a pro hard, hard time because well, of the beard? Well, my, my mom gives me a little bit of a hard time. My grandmother's as well. He said, why, why are you growing that beard? Why don't you shave it off? And qu quite honestly, um, you know, I'm not growing it for my mom, my grandmother's, other people. You know, I'm doing it simply to, to, to follow that which uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, told his, his, uh, his followers to do. So that's, uh, you know, simply the reason why, why I'm doing it. Now, your name, okay, your name was Greg, okay? Yeah. Now, technically, you don't have to change your name, no. right? No. Okay, yeah. why did you choose to change your name to Isa? Well, it, it's quite an interesting story. Um, I, had, I met that Albanian brother who had introduced me to Islam because formerly I didn't really have much exposure to Islam and Muslims. You know, I grew up in an area where it was mostly uh, Catholics and also um, fairly big Jewish communities. So those are the, you know, people that I grew up with in, uh, in, in Toronto. And uh, so after I had met him, um, he, he was saving uh, my, my name. Well, he, he forgot my name and he happened to save my uh, my name in his phone as Isa, and the next time that I met with him, he t he told me so that he had um, sa saved my name as Isa, and I just said, you know what, that's that's a very nice name. It's the name of Jesus, peace be upon him. So I just from that point on decided that I, I like that name, and it's uh, you know stuck with me since. So that's actually the name of that mighty messenger that no Muslim is a Muslim unless he believes in Jesus, peace be upon him. His, that's what your name is named after? Absolutely. Jesus? Yeah, absolutely. And Jesus had a beard? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Moses had a beard? Yeah. Abraham, Abraham had a beard? Yeah. All these mighty messengers yeah. had a beard. And not only the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, but all of them. So yeah. it's amazing that, you know, Muslims who are praying like Jesus, who are greeting each other with peace like Jesus, mm -hmm. who are refraining from, you know, keeping the commandments like Jesus did. Yeah. We're continuing yeah. that tradition, that Absolutely. dean, that way of life. Exactly. So at what point exactly. now that you're a young man yeah. and you're thinking, you're contemplating, did you start asking yourself, okay, you know, those important questions. What's the purpose of life? You know, why am mm -hmm. I here? Where am I going when I die? Did exactly. you start contemplating that? Yeah. Uh, what, around Absolutely. what time was that in your life? Absolutely. I would say when, when I was 20, when I, when I, one of the main uh, first questions that uh, this brother, whose name is uh, Abdul Rahman, actually told me, uh, sorry, he, he asked me, he says, what do you think were to happen to you if you were to just simply die? You know, die like that, just living a life of just always having fun, going out, you know, having a girlfriend, and just being heedless of, you know, what our purpose here in life is and what's, what's actually going to happen to us once we die. And I remember just putting my head down and saying and thinking to myself that I didn't want to die like that. I didn't want to die where 
I was I wasn't living a life that um, you know I was I was happy with, and you know I I definitely wanted to change, and um, you know that's that's the one question that really uh, really made me think, and definitely my journey began from there to to research and find out what happens to us once we die, and um, you know that we ought to we ought to die in, in a in a state where we're, we're in a state of peace, where we're, we're happy with ourselves, we're happy with the type of life that we're living. We're going we're gonna to take a break and we're going to come back with more and continue on with your story and your experiences here on The Dean Show. We'll be right back. I started asking deeper questions. The question I want people to really ask themselves is when you come back from a night on the town, you've been drinking, you've been boozing, you've been dancing, you've been hanging out with girls, guys, or whatever. Number one, did you improve yourself as a human being? Number two, did you contribute anything to the betterment of humanity? The amazing thing is, is that the most advanced studies in psychology about human happiness show that these are the two key factors in making people profoundly happy. I take five minutes out of my day and pray to the Creator and none of the creations and I feel a deep internal peace. And I still have my normal life. Back here on The Dean Show with Greg Isa, and you were asked by a Muslim, yeah. okay, you were asked like, and at that point in your life, you, you're not living a, a good, organic, wholesome life, obviously, right? Right, right. So now he's asking you, you know, what, happen, what would happen if you died right now? Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and then you, mm -hmm. what happened from there? Mm -hmm. Well, I would definitely say, um, you know, after that point, I, uh, the brothers were very, very kind and very nice. They, they gave me an English translation of the Quran, the Noble Quran. They, they brought me for Juma. They brought me to the Masjid. And from, from that point on, I just really started to look into what Islam was. Because at that point, I didn't really know much about Islam. And that's when I started to really research, uh, read the English translation of the Qur'an. Again, meet with other people who are more knowledgeable, ask them questions. And at the same time, you know, look into other faiths as well. Because Islam doesn't you know, encourage us to be, stay ignorant. It encourages us to learn, to understand, to you know, feel free to look into other faiths. It's not like Islam is the only faith that exists and we're, we shouldn't look into any other, uh, other faiths. So I definitely took the time then, which I didn't before, to look into Christianity, see what Christianity was all about, what it taught, you know, things about the Bible, what the Bible is teaching. And uh, I definitely you know, looked into other, other religions at the same time, which I hadn't done previously. Mm -hmm. So it actually encouraged me to learn, understand uh, about Judaism more, about Christianity more, and about other faiths as well. And at the same time, I was learning about what, what Islam uh, teaches about, for example, Jesus. And I had no idea before I became Muslim that Muslims believed in Jesus as a prophet and a messenger. And they believed in the miracles of Jesus, that he was born miraculously without, without a father, and that he performed miracles. Th these were all things that were definitely new to me. And looking back on that, and knowing now, because I still have obviously a lot of family members and, and old friends, that still don't have, have uh, you know, still don't know things about Islam, such as the fact that we believe, we believe in Isa as, as a prophet and a messenger of God. It, it, it's, it's really uh, amazing that, you know, so many people are still in a situation where they don't have peace in life. Right. Because mm -hmm. they're not living purpose. So you see right. many of, you know, human beings who are emulating someone you know, mm -hmm. we want to emulate, that's why I asked you about the beard. Yeah. You know, we want to emulate the best of people. Absolutely. Imitate the prophets of God because Absolutely. they were the ones who were teaching us how to get close to God. Yeah. So do you feel like now, you know, with full conviction that if anyone investigates this dean, yeah. using the faculties that the Creator has given us, yeah. your brain, your reasoning, yeah. you know, and, and all, everything that God has given you, that you'll come, that a person will come to, to know that this is definitely away from the Creator, no yeah. doubt about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I look at it in the way also is that people go to university and spend four years of their lives.
They pay for their education. They wake up in the morning. They study for their exams and all simply for a diploma so that they could get a better job. I would just encourage everybody to spend even a little, not, not maybe not that much time, maybe not four years of their time, but at least put forward somewhat of an effort, somewhat of an effort into researching about the Quran, but what the Quran says about the prophets. Look into what Christianity says as well, you know, and, and compare the two. And I believe anybody that's sincere has a, has, has a sincere intention and is truly looking for the truth that, that they will find it. Yeah, it's, it's it, I mean, I'm, I'm just, uh, the more, you know, I look into it, the more I investigate it, the more I'm convinced about it Absolutely. because it really stimulates the mind. It, it, yeah. It's not something where we're blindly following it. It's based mm -hmm. on, it's truth yeah. based on proof, right. on evidence. Right. So, right. you know, and you see like, uh, you know, you follow, if you follow some of the news, some of the, you know, things that are going on. Uh, I was just reading like uh, recently, I don't know, uh, you heard of Randy Travis? He's like a big time country singer. Okay. You know, I wanted just to bring this up because yeah. a lot of people, they emulate the superstars, the celebrities. Right. Yeah. But if you see their lives, they're upside down. Yeah. He was just caught, you know, driving drunk, mm. combated with the police. They found him naked, you know. Wow. So this is a country superstar. Right. And you have people like Myri My, My Cyrus. Or who's like Cyrus. a big hit in, in, in Canada over there? Drake. Drake. Yeah, you he's see? from Toronto. Oh, he was just in a fight with the Chris guy. What's his name? Chris Brown. Chris Brown in a oh. nightclub and he's busted up. Did you read about that? <laughs> no, I'm not really following this. Yeah. So really you know, you just one. sometimes you read the Yahoo News and you, you, know, you see all this, you know, all this uh, drama that's out there. Yeah. And obviously you can see that these celebrities who are, in, most of them in celebrity rehab with Dr. Drew. Yeah. <laughs> you heard yeah, of Dr. Drew. Yeah, yeah. And their yeah. lives are upside down. Yeah. They have substance abuse. You know, many of them are suicidal. They're on crack, on meth, on all sorts of coke and all sorts of dope, right? Mm -hmm. And their lives are upside down because Absolutely. they don't have purpose. They have yeah. money, but they don't have purpose. Right. Right. Do you run into some of your old friends and family, people who still aren't, you know, uh, live in purpose, live in, you know, how the Creator wants them to, uh, yeah. to, to live, and how your experience has been now with um, the, 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 have you had some hostility also from people from back home, from Hungary, or mm -hmm. family members now that you've accepted this way, this mm -hmm. dean, mm -hmm. this way of life? Mm -hmm. I, I would say at the beginning I did have some hostility when it came to my sister and my dad. Uh, not so much my mom. My mom's definitely been uh, very supportive of me throughout uh, the last four, uh, four and a half years. But I do see with my old, fr with my old friends, uh, they're a few years older than me. And, and I, know, I know for a fact that they're getting sick and tired of that lifestyle of always going out, always you know, chasing girls and doing, you know, they know that lifestyle has nothing good to offer at the end. It's, it's something that, that people imagine in their minds that is fun, it's exciting. And, and it's only when they follow through with it that they realize that it has, it had, there's no substance when you live that, that type of lifestyle. And, you know, we were, we were mentoring, uh, mentioning Drake before. And uh, interestingly enough, um, I found out recently through a friend that he actually has a copy of the Quran in his apartment in Toronto. He does? Yeah. This is does. through a friend. Yeah. May God yeah. Almighty, uh, yeah. the Creator, guide him. May Allah guide him, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So tell us now, you've, have you, have you as, a, as a new Muslim, you know, now, how, how, you said your mom's supportive. Yeah. How about your father and your yeah. sister? They're giving you a hard time. Have you um, been able to share mm -hmm, and tell mm -hmm. us for, for I, I know we all make mistakes. And sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, we look back and say, man, I wish I could have did some things different. Right. So for some of the new Muslims, right. people who've accepted this way of life. Right. Now they can learn from your experiences, mm -hmm. some of the, the do's and don'ts, some things right. that you would encourage them to do, not right. to do. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I would say at the beginning, because... My sister and my father were a little bit hostile. You know, I, I was a little bit impatient. I was a little bit impatient and got upset at certain things that they did, certain things that they said. And looking back on it truly now, I mean, you know, I, I just wish that I could have done a little bit more when it came to still keeping those communication, uh, still, still keeping with those communications when it comes to Islam with my father, with, with my sister. I mean, unfortunately now, because there was a bit of hostility, I just kind of had the attitude is, you know what, I'd rather not even talk about it with them. But that's definitely not the right approach. I mean, you know, we should always, as, as everyone knows, we should always keep good relationships with our families, with our fathers, with our sisters, with our, with our mothers. 
and, and talk to them about Islam. F try to find creative ways of bringing it up or finding other people that could talk to them about Islam. And uh, we should al always stay steadfast in trying to give da'wah to our, our family members and, um, you know, and just simply, uh, simply do, our, do our best and, and, and do our part because that's all we could do is in the nicest way, convey the message to them and, and pray for them that Allah puts, 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 that, put, puts Iman, puts faith into their heart. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more with our brother Esau here on The Dean Show. You think these things are going to bring you happiness? You know why you keep going back to the club and you keep going back to these desires? Because you never find satisfaction. It's going to end up causing you, if it hasn't already, a lot of pain. You think you're happy? You're kidding yourself. You're kidding. You really are. What we are offering in Islam, what we have found in Islam for ourselves, is a means by which our hearts are at peace. They're at rest. They're not discontent. We are pleased with what we have. I am not afraid to stand alone if a lies by my side. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone if a lies by my side. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone if a lies by my side. I am not afraid to stand alone. Back here on the Dean Show, and we're talking with our brother Isa, talking to us about your experiences, how you came to this beautiful way of life. What, what, was, what was it at the end? Okay, you said that you met this, this brother yeah. and his character, and yeah. really, you know, had a profound impact on you, and Absolutely. you just, you know, he invited you to Islam, and you accepted yeah. Islam? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, for the most part, a lot of people, they study Islam fully, but I think, you know, why, why take a year or two years why or wait? three years? Why wait? You know, once, you know, once you, uh, you know, you, you shouldn't really think about what are, what's going to be the consequences of me accepting Islam. See, I never thought of those things. I just simply, you know, had, had a lot of trust in this brother because I just saw from his sincerity, you know, his, um, his character and uh, like how strong his faith was and the things that he was telling me. Like he was truly trying to help me get out of the struggles that I was going through in my life. And, and I just knew that what, what he believed him was truly the way. Mm -hmm. I, just, I, just, I just truly knew at that point. And I didn't think of the consequences of, oh, what's my, what are my friends going to think? You know, what's going to happen? What are other people going to think? Because I truly believe a lot of people are actually a slave to those types of, th those things. They're always worried about, okay, you know, how they look, what, what, do, what, are, their, what are friends think, what, what are people uh, at work going to say, what, what are the, or what are other people going to think of me? And when you're always trying to impress uh, when you're always trying to impress your other people, you're actually not being yourself. You know, you're just, you know, you're just always, you know, a, a, a simply a slave to that. You know, is is are other people around you gonna accept you? Definitely. You see a lot of people procrastinating, mm -hmm. and I've had this experience talking to a lot of people, and mm -hmm. then they, they know mm -hmm. it's like you know they know that this is the truth, mm -hmm. but because of the surrounding factors, right, friends, exactly. you know, yeah. what other people are gonna say, yeah. it's like they. Step, mm -hmm. put it mm -hmm. away, put it away, put it to the side, and they just keep on with life. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, this is uh, good advice. Don't procrastinate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. if it's the truth, be upon the truth. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So yeah. tell us more now. You've gotten also to, what, what were, what were be, besides your family, what were also some, some challenging, because life is a test, obviously. Mm -hmm. We're going to be tested. Mm -hmm. So what were some of the other challenges being a new Muslim mm -hmm. and these challenges that you had and you overcame, and how did you overcome them? Right, right. I would probably say the, the biggest challenge was I, I decided I completely wanted to change. So I left off that lifestyle of drinking and going out and just, you know, being around friends that I knew were going to negatively influence me. So I totally left off those friends. And, uh, you know, at the beginning, it, it was hard because there was a lot of times it, it became fairly lonely. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know anybody. I hadn't grown up around Muslims. I didn't know any, you know, I didn't have any friends. I would say that. And that was probably the biggest difficulty at the beginning. But uh, Alhamdulillah, all praise be to Allah, that um, Allah replaced those old friends 
with much, much greater friends that I'm definitely blessed to, to have today. And um, what, what I could simply say is for the new Muslims, at the beginning, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit tough. It's gonna be a little bit tough. And uh, you know, it, it definitely gives you a time to, to build that relationship with Allah when, when, when you're in those times of loneliness. And you know, what I could say to, to, to Muslims, if you see a new Muslim or somebody that you've never seen before at the masjid, go up to him. You know, ask him how he's doing, what his name is, you know, how long he's been Muslim, you know, invite him out with, uh, you know, some brothers and just, just show that genuine hospitality that, that true Muslims, that true Muslims have. And that was probably my biggest challenge. And that's what I try to do today. If, if I know someone just became Muslim, I'll, I'll, I'll get his contact information. I'll say, hey, I'll come pick you up. I'll bring you for Juma for Friday prayers. You know, I'll introduce him to some other, like brothers in the masjid. And uh, you know, simply take him out, and uh, you know, just try to show him a bit of uh, ho any bit of hospitality that I can. Uh, now, before we cut out and the show is almost over, you know, I, obviously we can understand. You know, a lot of times, you know, people look at this deen, this way of life, as the other. Mm -hmm. So now you become a Muslim, and let's say your parents, they think that maybe look, he's become a terrorist or something. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Islam has nothing to do with that. Right. So, right. you know. But now when they get to know mm -hmm. what we believe mm -hmm. and they see that Islam is actually beautiful, it's calling mm -hmm. a person to have peace with their creator, with themselves and the rest of their humanity, you become a better son, yeah. you become a better and more honest human being and you're more uh, moral in, in, in your life and you have more compassion and love and good character. Now, you know, for, for those people, you know, your, your father and who, whoever else is out there from your family, you know, that maybe might get to watch the show, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they were a little bit reluctant to have mm -hmm. you explain because they were so on the defensive, mm -hmm. you know, and other people out in the world who might be from Hungary watching it or from mm -hmm. Serbia or whoever, and they just have no idea about Islam. What is it now? So what is it about Islam that really, you know, changed your life? And what are some of the beliefs? What do you believe now? Do you believe in some, you know, Martian from outer space or, mm -hmm. you know, what, what do you believe now? What, what is it about Islam and what, what do you believe? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would say, I would say Islam has really given uh, purpose, purpose to my life, and and Islam is not a, a way of life that's boring by any means. You know, Islam is such such a beautiful way of life that there's there's always something new and interesting to do. You know, we have our five daily prayers, we have our Friday prayers on Friday, where where we go to the masjid, we hear a nice lecture, we spend some times with brothers. Afterwards, we just had uh, Ramadan that just unfortunately passed us, and this this past Ramadan was one of the, one of the greatest Ramadans, for sure the greatest Ramadan that I ever had, and it was so nice on Eid to give all the brothers you know big nice hugs like after Eid, and uh, in inshallah I'll be also going to uh, going for Hajj as well, and I mean you know there's definitely nothing you know that uh, you should be bored with. There's always something to do. You know, there's always something new to, to learn, new to, new to do. And uh, at the same time, we should also be calling people to Islam. You know, that's, that, that's very important. And, but obviously before that, we have to know what Islam is. We have to seek that knowledge. We have to go to the right sources. We have to learn from our scholars, from our imams at, at our masjids, and truly understand what Islam is, implement, into, implement it into our lives. And, uh, and then also call, of course, call other people to it. And Islam is very simple. It is, it is the only pure monotheistic faith on the earth. There's no, there's no other faith that is, as, that is pure monotheistic. We, we simply believe that there's only one God worthy of worship and that we should follow His commands and we should follow the examples of all the prophets and messengers that God has sent us we, we live according to the books that he has revealed to his messengers. And the last and final book that he has revealed to all of mankind till, till the day of judgment is, of course, the Quran. And we should try to really read it and internalize it and, um, and uh, just, just simply live according to the Quran to the best, best of our ability. And a part of following the Quran is, of course, following the sunnah, which is the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
and we, we should study about, we should look into his biography, you know, how he treated his, his enemies, how he treated his friends, his wives, his children. And we should truly, you know, we should truly always look at the best of creation and the best of examples, which were the prophets and messengers of God Almighty. And we should do our best at all times to just live according to th their way, the way of life that they live, and try to really um, establish, that, establish that relationship with, with our Creator and, um, you know, and really put an emphasis on, on establishing the prayer. That, that, is, that is very important. We need to, at the beginning, discipline ourselves. And uh, it's funny, I heard something recently that you know, uh, uh, somebody I was listening to said, you know, they would always tell their mother, you know, oh, I, I have to pray. And the mom would say, why do you have to pray? And then, and then from I have to pray, it became to I need to pray. I want to pray. And at the beginning, it does have its challenges establishing the prayer, but it definitely is um, very important. And after our belief in one God and after our belief in the last and final messenger of God, we definitely need to put a lot of emphasis on the prayer. Prayer, prayer. Yes, definitely. And we can't go wrong worshiping only God, praying right. to one God, doing good, being good. Thank you very much for being with us on The Dean Show. It's always a pleasure to talk to people like yourself and get to share your experiences with the viewers of The Dean Show. May God Almighty the Creator reward you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you again for sitting through another episode of The Dean Show, another human being story, another person's story on how they came to this beautiful Dean and how they're living purpose, living according to God's will, not their desires and that's what life is all about you got one shot to get it right and at the end we die and at the end we die and then it's either paradise or the hellfire so we're going to follow those individuals who are not bringing us closer to the creator bad company bad friends that are just bringing out the worst in you you smoking dope drinking not kool-aid but jack and coke and you're snoping dope and you're lying, deceiving, cheating, and you're not living a good, wholesome life. You're not happy. You're gambling your whole life away. Not only are you gambling, but you're gambling the whole life away. And, and, and you're not living your purpose, and you're not happy. You're not content. You'll never be content until you live according to God's game plan. And you got one shot to get it right, one life. And if you're watching this episode and you like what our guest had to say, really contemplate and think. Ask the Creator. Ask Him alone to guide you. Only God. And if you can understand that, and you like that, only praying to God, not having to go in a confession box, 10 Hail Marys, praying to a man, to a woman, to a stick, to a stone, to a bone. No, you only pray to God. He's the only one that can forgive you. No one in creation, but to the one who created creation, the one creator. You pray to him and ask him right now. You could have done the worst of things, but right now it's your chance. Ask the creator to guide you. Ask the creator. Because if you ask, then you shall receive. But if you keep going and living your life, a heedless life, life of debauchery, just find your lusts and desires, what's going to happen to them when you die? Just like our guest, when he was asked that question, what if you died right now, death came upon you, it's over, it's done. Don't let it come to that. Ask the Creator right now to guide you. Repent for your sins and start living a good, wholesome, organic life. And you can call us at any time, 1-800-662-ISLAM. Don't forget to pick up the new Dunya Tadeen. And visit us here every week on The Dean Show. We'll see you next time. God willing, until then, peace be unto you. This is The Dean Show. This is The Dean Show. This is The Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Greetings of peace to everybody. How are you? You come to get some food for the soul. You've been replete with everything else, but it's not satisfying the soul. Money can't buy that happiness. It won't bring you peace. Not even a six-pack of peace. You can't buy it.
Angel.